We're getting updates about the teen driver accused of causing an 18-wheeler to crash into a house in Mission last month. New court documents show that Jose Osvaldo Sanchez was driving without a license. Mission police say Sanchez switched lanes unsafely, causing the 18-wheeler to drive into a house. The driver of the 18-wheeler, Anastasio Martinez Jr., was pronounced dead at the scene. When asked, Sanchez told investigators that he was running late for work. Sanchez was charged with criminally negligent homicide and received a $50,000 bond. Let's go, boy! Yeah! All right, guys, what's going on? We have an update. We're heading back to Mission, Texas, where the semi-driver unfortunately lost his life after he veered off the highway and crashed into an abandoned house. Now, at one point, we all thought that the driver had health issues that probably could have caused him to veer off the road and crash into the house. But come to find out, there was a team that caused the crash. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on! Jose Osvaldo Sanchez, 18, was arrested by Mission Police on a charge of criminal negligent homicide. Sanchez was arrested in connection to a crash where an 18-wheeler drove into an empty home after losing control on the expressway, killing the driver Anastasio Martinez Jr. At 9.01 a.m. June 29th, a Mission Police officer was dispatched to the area of 2605 WIH2 in reference to the fatal accident. When he arrived, he saw a red 2013 Fiat passenger car with heavy damage facing oncoming traffic on the frontage road. The officer saw the driver, identified as Sanchez, walking away from the vehicle. Sanchez told the officer he was behind another slower vehicle and had turned on his left turn signal to change lanes to the middle lane. Mr. Sanchez said he looked to his left and used his left side mirror prior to changing lanes and did not see any vehicles on the lane he was planning to move to, the affidavit stated. Sanchez said he changed lanes and was struck by someone, causing his vehicle to roll over. An investigator followed up with Sanchez at the hospital, where Sanchez told him he was driving to work. Sanchez added that both he and the other vehicle were traveling at about 40 miles per hour and that he was running late for work. Sanchez said again that he activated his turn signal, waited three seconds before changing lanes, and then felt the impact. Sanchez was asked if he has a valid Texas driver license, to which he replied he did not, the document stated. Two days later, investigators watched video from Junior's tire shop near the crash site which showed Sanchez's red Fiat on the outside lane and the tractor trailer in the middle lane. The investigator noted seeing a pickup truck approximately 80 to 100 yards in front of Sanchez, but no other vehicles or debris were seen in front of his vehicle, which would have caused him to change lanes. To this point, investigators determined that Sanchez had changed lanes unsafely. The following day, investigators watched the tractor trailer's dash cam, where it shows that the red Fiat drove out of its lane and into the Freightliner's lane of travel causing the crash, the affidavit stated. Police also reviewed the GPS monitoring device, which showed the tractor was traveling at a constant speed of 66 miles per hour prior to the crash. The dashcam video showed the Fiat traveling at a lower speed than the 18-wheeler and weaving within its lane prior to changing lanes, the document added. The dash cam also showed that the Fiat activated its turn signal. The Fiat then changes lanes onto the middle line, still driving at a lower speed than the Freightliner causing it to get struck by the front fender and front right tire of the tractor. The action of changing lanes performed by the Fiat driver were not consistent with an experienced, licensed driver and were unnecessary as there was an open lane of travel in front of him. The actions of the Fiat driver cause a substantial and justifiable risk and the failure to perceive that risk as contrary a reasonable and ordinary driver would make as it changed lanes maintaining the same speed. The affidavit stated, The 18-wheeler then lost control, leaving the roadway and ultimately crashing into an empty home. First responders made every effort to extract the driver but were unsuccessful, the document details. It was later learned that Martinez died upon impact from injuries sustained in the crash. 
Sanchez was arraigned Tuesday and his bond was set at $50,000. He was released from jail the following day. Now, it seems as though this particular young man impeded the truck driver, eventually cutting him off, forcing the driver to veer off the road, had an accident with him, crashed into a couple of cars in a parking lot, and laid to rest in an abandoned house, which unfortunately took his life. Drivers, I tell you, I tell you every day, every day, I, I see this every day. I try to leave space where cars just jump in front of me every day. I try my best to not be too close. I leave enough distance, at least three seconds, maybe four, but three because we have drivers that just jumps in front of us every day. An unfortunate situation for this particular driver, he explained that he did this and did that, but in reality, bro, you cut the driver off, which forced him to hit you and then crash into an abandoned house and lost his life. The dash cam people don't lie. You said you was doing about 40. Somebody in front of you was impeding you. Come to find out it wasn't nobody in front of, in front of your lane of travel. You decided to cut off the truck driver because you was running late. Plus, you don't have a license. You're not even supposed to be driving, my guy. And how about this? How are you able to get out on bond after doing what you have done? Mate, maybe this is your first offense. But if the driver was alive, they would try to make it the driver's fault. Oh, it's, it's the driver's fault. He's the reason why he veered off and crashed into a building. We're going to have to investigate the driver. We're going to have to make sure that the driver wasn't distracted. We're going to have to make sure the driver wasn't on the phone. We had to make sure that the driver was, wasn't doing nothing to cause that crash because it's the driver's fault for running into the back of you and then veering off and running into the house. If the driver was alive, I'm sure the investigation would have focused more so on the driver. Am I wrong? Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments below. Let's, let's have a discussion. Am I wrong? If the driver was alive, then the investigation would be focused on him instead of the young man, right? But now, unfortunately, the driver lost his life in this situation. And now, a couple of days later, we come to find out that this team right here has something to do with the driver's unfortunate demise and was let out of jail he's at home with his family chilling preparing getting ready for court i'm sure they're gonna make him look real presentable cut his hair put on a suit and tie make make him make him more what's the word i'm looking for respectful but if, what if the driver was alive though what if the driver was alive then that driver would probably have to be out of work. He had to go and take a drug test. He'll probably have to be on a safety hold and all sorts of things. What if it was the other way around? What if the young man would have would have would have been unalived in the situation? Then the driver will still be in jail, right? Until court is is set. That's that's how long the driver would have been hemmed up. But since it's an 18-year-old unlicensed driver that was in a hurry to get to work that morning that caused the accident and the unfortunate demise of the truck driver oh he gets to go out on bail fifty thousand dollars by the way while the family is at home trying to get money up to bury their loved one here's this young man's family able to get up the money to get him out of jail <sighs> I'm just saying, if it was the other way around, it will it will probably be a whole different scenario. But rest in peace to the driver. Hopefully the family get justice. Now we come to find out that it wasn't health related. This young man caused the accident, which forced the driver off the road and into his demise. Drivers, we, we see this every day. 
This ain't nothing new. We got people cutting us off every day. Hey, Garmin, say video. I got videos of truck drivers cutting us off. I got videos of cars. Y'all don't use your blinkers. Y'all just get over. You just cut over. And I honestly believe the young man just cut over without even using his blinker. That's what I believe. But what do you guys believe? If you like content like this and more, man, engage with the video. I really appreciate it. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video. Share the video. I appreciate you guys. Until next time, everybody. And if it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of y'all shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.